the conservation of energy for particle kinetics, simply put, is that the total energy of a particle or a system of particles remains constant if only conservative forces are doing work to this system. But what is conservative force? Conservative force is the type of force that it has the property that when it's doing work, the work it's doing only depends on the initial and final positions, but it's independent of the path taken. Typical examples of conservative forces include the gravitational force or the weight and the spring force. And a typical example of non-conservative force includes the frictional force. Since for a conservative force, its ability to do work only depends on its locations, we can define a potential energy associated with this force to describe this ability. Keep in mind that, in general, the actual value of the potential energy is not of interest. What's more important is the change of the potential energies because of the change in location. Potential energy is normally denoted by the letter V, and the gravitational potential energy Vg, which is the potential energy associated with the weight of an object, equals to its weight W multiplied by its vertical location Z. And of course, its vertical location can be represented by other letters depending on what coordinate system you choose. So to calculate the gravitational potential energy, we first need to draw a datum where the vertical location z is zero. Therefore, for any location above this datum, z is positive, and the gravitational potential energy is positive. For any location below this datum, z is negative, and the gravitational potential energy is also negative. As you will quickly notice, the value of this potential energy will change if you change your datum. That is correct, but as I said, the absolute value of the potential energy is not of interest. What's more important is the difference of the potential energy due to the change of the particle's location. And through a quick analysis, you will find out that no matter how you choose the datum to be, the difference in the potential energy will stay the same for the state change for the particle. The elastic potential energy, Ve, is defined to describe the ability of a spring force to do work to an object that is attached to the spring. Unlike the gravitational potential energy, the datum for the elastic potential energy is not randomly chosen. It is always chosen to be the position when the spring is unstretched. Therefore, when the spring is compressed, the displacement is negative. When the spring is stretched, the displacement is positive. However, the potential energy associated with the spring force is always calculated as one half k, which is the spring constant, times s to the second power. Therefore, it is always non-negative. This is because spring would always try to restore its original shape and length. Therefore, no matter if it's compressed or stretched, it will always do work to the particle in order to return to its original unstretched location. Therefore, with the definition of potential energy, the principle of work and energy that we learned earlier can now be rewritten into the conservation of energy, which only applies to the situation when all the forces doing work are conservative forces. In other words, if non-conservative forces such as frictional force is doing work, you cannot apply the conservation of energy. The conservation of energy written in the equation is T1 plus V1, the total energy at state 1 for the particle, equals to T2 plus V2, the total energy at state 2. T1, again, is the kinetic energy, 1 half times the mass times the speed to the second power, and V here is the potential energy that includes, generally, the gravitational potential energy and elastic potential energy. And the conservation of energy can also be applied to a system of particles as long as all the external forces doing work to this system are all conservative forces. Let's look at this example. 
we have a 10 kilogram collar that is connected to a spring. It travels down a smooth slope. If initially it has a speed of 20 meter per second, we need to determine its speed when it gets to the second state. For this problem, since the slope is smooth, we can neglect the friction. Therefore, the only forces doing work to this collar during this process are its weight as well as the spring force. And both of these two forces are conservative forces. Therefore, instead of applying the principle of work and energy, we can now apply the conservation of energy to solve this problem. So let's first calculate the total energy of the collar at state 1, which includes its kinetic energy and its total potential energy. For its kinetic energy, it is evaluated as 1 half times its mass times its speed to the second power, which equals to 2000 joule. For its gravitational potential energy, we need to first draw a datum at what location. The vertical location is considered to be zero. And since it really doesn't matter where we draw this datum, we want to pick a convenient location. Therefore, let me just draw the datum to be along the x-axis. Therefore, its gravitational potential energy equals to its weight times simply y1, its y-coordinate, which can be determined from the equation of the slope. And therefore, its gravitational potential energy is determined to be 1,569.6 joule. For its elastic potential energy, we know that it is calculated as 1 half k s squared. k is the spring constant. s is the displacement always compared to the unstretched length of this spring. Therefore, it is determined to be 16 minus 8 meters. And from here, we can calculate the elastic potential energy is 1,280 joule. For the total energy of the collar at state 2, again, it includes its kinetic energy, which equals to 1 half times its mass times V2 squared. And V2 here is the unknown that we need to solve for in this problem. Also, the gravitational potential energy that must be calculated based on the same datum that we used earlier to be W times Y2. And Y2 is, again, simply the Y coordinate can, that can be calculated based on the equation of the slope. And also the elastic potential energy, again calculated from the equation. And S2 here, again, is the displacement as calculated from the unstretched original length of this spring. Therefore, we apply the conservation of energy to this color that its total energy at state 1 equals to its total energy at state 2. Substitute in all the values that we know. And from this equation, we can solve for V2 to be 28.3 meter per second. And that answers this question.